morning everyone it's Pam from Pouring Artists International here today I'm gonna to work on something called back in the day when I used to teach in scrapbook stores many many years ago this technique was called creating serendipity paper serendipity is something beautiful basically made out of nothing so I'm going to show you how to use some scraps some items that you would probably normally throw away but again anyone that knows me knows that I pretty much recycle everything I can so let me move this out of the way and I'm going to use alcohol inks today this is photo paper glossy photo paper but I can't use the back side like we do nowadays using the Kirkland photo paper and the back side is kind of like a, U a Yupo paper. This is very matte, so the alcohol inks would not move on here, plus the fact it has the uh, name on it. So the back side is basically useless to me. So what I'm going to use it for today is just to use it as a palette to ink on top of. And that's okay because I will eventually use this. And if you saw the video that I just did, video number 11, it was taking an old piece of photo paper like this that had scrap that I used to clean off my pouncing tool with. And then I used some of the new Ranger alloys and transformed it completely. So that's why I'm going to use this as a palette rather than this ceramic tile which you can see is getting stained. So I'm just going to use this just to create art on top of art. Okay. What I'm going to use today is actually candy wrappers, believe it or not. And not only candy wrappers, I have, what's that? Gum wrappers. So here's my favorite Hershey Nuggets. We're going to use that and believe it or not depending on the color you use we won't have to worry about these words because we're going to cover them if they don't cover then you can just ink the whole thing and just use the side pieces but if you layer your inks enough it'll cover and i also have from easter we have some foil from the easter eggs colored I would prefer to use the silver side, which obviously is aluminum foil, which you can use scraps of aluminum foil. I do that as well, as long as there's no food gunk on it. And we're going to ink them first. Let me move this out of the way real quick. Just to show you, I did some last night, just in anticipation to get ready. Here is the gold... Hershey candy wrapper right there and you can see you have no colors I'm sorry you have no words on there because the colors are dark and it covered it did it in a bunch of layers wherever I saw the words starting to come up I would um, add some darker colors on top of it because all this is going to be overlapped anyway when we create our serendipity paper but you can see how beautiful it is and how easy it will be to ink. You'll find that you're not going to throw away your candy wrappers even. And you can see it's paper on this side, so it just bleeds through, but that's okay. We're using that side. So. Okay, we're ready to get started. And what I've done is I've broken up the alcohol inks that I'm going to use. I have dark colors over here on my left side. And I have yellow and orange on the right hand side. Now obviously I don't want to use yellow and orange on here because we've already got a copper color going on there. So those inks are not even going to show up that well. So I am, when I'm using this kind of a candy wrapper, I'm going to go with the dark colors. And when I have this kind of a wrapper with foil, I'll go ahead and use the, the yellow and the orange colors and probably some of the dark ones as well. It'll show up. But here I'm trying to cover these words as well. I have two pouncing tools. And when I'm doing serendipity paper, 
I don't care that these are used. In fact, I keep them aside for that. Now I have all kinds of dark colors on here and that's okay. Once I put the alcohol blending solution or my 91% alcohol, it's just going to rejuvenate some of the colors and it's just going to add to the mixed media project. This one, I'm just starting out with a clean one. I'm going to go and use that for my lighter colors being the yellow and the orange. So I'm going to put that over by that. We're going to start off with the dark colors. What I'm using today for inks is Ranger inks. And we've got this beautiful boysenberry purple. I already have them open, so I've got to be careful. This cobalt blue. This beautiful glacier blue. I love this one, Laguna. And for the yellow and orange, my favorite yellow, Dijon. It's one of the new colors that are out. And Sunset Orange. I have some alloys here with me. I'm not sure if I'll float them over. I might. We have Statue, which is kind of a gold, or I'm sorry, a bronze, because we have Gilded which is the gold, and then we have mined, which is the copper. I also have silver, which is called foundry. I'm not sure if I'll use them yet, but we'll put them aside. I'm leaving the lids on those because I have to shake them. And I have alcohol ink blending solution and 91% isopropyl alcohol. Simple as that. Now we'll just get started. Since this is already loaded with some ink, I'm actually just going to put some of the blending solution on that just to get the sponge softened up a little bit. And let's take off some of that ink. We'll see what we have on here. You can see there lots of purples. So I'm just using the pouncing tool and it's still very light. So I'll go straight into color. I'm going to put some of the purple on there, the poisonberry, alongside some of the cobalt right over here. And before I even put more blending solution on it, I'm going to go straight into these words with the dark colors. And there's basically my first layer to cover those words. And I'll just go right up the middle there. Now you can start to see that we do have the words still coming through. Let's see if you can see that. Sorry about that. So that's where we're going to just add more layers. I'm always going to throw some down here just to have a beautiful base. Now I think I'll use some of the glacier alongside the Laguna. Let's throw that on there. Oh yeah, beautiful. I'm not going in any particular way. I'm just pouncing all over. The layers is what's gonna, layering the inks is what's going to cover. And again, it's okay if you don't cover it all. You can cover it once we get to the next step. Look at that. Beautiful. Still see a little bit of the words. It's okay. We're going to keep going. I think I'll give it a little spray. Look at that. I even love that copper coming up there, just like that. And actually, I might even leave that just like that. You really can't see the words. 
Beautiful. Just like that. See, I wasn't even expecting to do that. I like that we have this nice, sharp copper right there. I'll leave those aside. That was easy, wasn't it? I'm actually going to just get some of that off of there just to add to this. Now I'm going to go on to the silver foil, which is the inside of the Easter candy and also the gum wrapper. Not the paper side. You obviously want the tin foil side. I haven't tried this one yet. As you see the words extra on there, but I'm sure it's going to be no problem to cover that. So now I'm going to take the new pouncing tool to put my lighter colors on. And I've got the Dijon and the orange. And I'm going to add just a little bit of the blending solution just to get them started only because this is a brand new sponge. Oh yeah, gotta love that Dijon. Look at how vibrant, beautiful that is. And one thing I did forget to mention in the beginning is I do take these wrappers and I crumple them up fairly small and open them back up smooth, crumple them again because I love to have all the wrinkles, like you can see there. All that texture. Look at that, I could stop there, but why? I think maybe I wanna add a little of that nice Laguna. Let's see what happens. So I've got some Laguna on there and some blending solution. Just a couple of drops. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Now I think I might actually use one of the alloys that I haven't tried yet. I haven't tried Mind or Statue. Let's try them both. We'll put one on each one and see how that looks. Since we have the same colors on both of these, now we'll be able to compare. With the alloys, they have mixing balls inside of them. So you wanna make sure that you shake them up well and shake them up often. But they work like the alcohol inks. I'm absolutely in love with these alloys. And they dance across the surface. They, they're a little bit different than the mixatives. These are amazing. So I'm actually just going to go straight in. This one's the mind. You know what? I think I'll just drop it on the surface. Drop here and a drop there. And let me add some blending solution. Just added a little darkness to it. Let's see what it looks like here. Well, we made some nice green with a Laguna and a Dijon. It's not as pungent as I thought it might be. Maybe I didn't shake it enough, but let me try the statue. We'll put that on this one right here. I should probably have enough blending solution right on here. Ooh, that's metallic-y. Wow. I think I might have to hit over here. Knock some of these off. There's no rhyme or reason to what we're doing to the foil. I need to bring in some of that color again. 
just a little bit so I'll throw in some of the Laguna it's all about layers beautiful and I think I need to throw in some orange on this one just to add a little more punch of color there oh yeah beautiful All right, let's see what we have here. If I could pick it up. That's the paper on the back. Back of that candy wrapper. Okay. That's it for part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, do all that good stuff. And I'm going to get started on working on part two.